Let's discuss the decomposition, which is called the singular valid decomposition. Previously, we talked about the diagonalization of a matrix A, where X can be written as a multiplication of the three matrices, where X will have the eigenvectors, and lambda is a diagonal matrix, his diagonal entries are the eigenvalues of this A. It has a couple of disadvantages, namely, A should be square, which means that if A is rectangular, we cannot use this decomposition. Second is, uh, the columns of X are not orthogonal, so namely x is not orthogonal. If the x would be orthogonal, then we could just find its inverse by transposing the x, while since the columns of the x are not orthogonal in general, we need to find the x inverse, which is inconvenient sometimes. And the third one is sometimes it is possible that the eigenvectors of a are dependent, which will lead to the situations where we don't have enough eigenvectors to construct the sticking position. So let us consider the case when the A is a rectangular matrix, K by N, with the rank R, with the rank A as R. So we would like to find the two symmetric matrices from this A. So, namely, if I multiply A transposed as A, we're going to have N by N matrix, which is both symmetric and a square matrix. So we can simply show whether this is symmetric matrix by just transposing this matrix. If I transpose this, if you remember the transposition of the multiplication of the two matrices, it is the multiplication of its transposes in reverse order. So we transpose the second matrix and multiply this to the transposition of the first one, which will be simply A. So if you remember, the matrix is called symmetric if its transpose is equal to itself. So this matrix is symmetric, so that is why the, its eigenvectors are orthogonal. So we choose them as autonomal, autonomal. We choose the eigenvectors of this matrix, V1, V2, and so on, Vr, as orthonormal. I wrote here R eigenvectors because the rank of this matrix will be also R. We can construct another symmetric matrix from the A by just multiplying A to the A transpose. It will be also symmetric. We can easily show whether this is symmetric again by just taking the transposition. If I take this transposition, it will be transposed of the second matrix, which will be simply A, and transpose multi multiply to the transpose of the first matrix, which is A transpose. So transposition of the matrix is equal to itself, so that is why it is symmetric. And we know that the symmetric matrices, again, have the orthogonal eigenvectors, and we choose them as orthonormal. U1, U2, and so on, UR, is orthonormal. Orthonor eigenvectors. Where the rank of this matrix is again the R. So now we need to discuss how to connect the eigenvectors of the A transpose to the A and AA transpose. So let's assume that V is one of the eigenvectors of A transpose to the A and lambda is its eigenvalue. 
it means that this, this equation is true. So a transpose multiplied to the a multiplied to this vector is equal to the vector which is parallel to the v. If you remember, we call the vector as eigenvector. If we multiply this vector to the matrix, it will be again the same vector which is scaled. So let us multiply both sides of this equation to the a from the left, from here as well. Then I can write this equation as a trans a multiplied as a transposed multiplied to the new vector a v is equal to the lambda multiplied to the a v. We have the same kind of equation. We multiply a vector to the matrix, and this is equal actually to the same vector which is scaled with some constant lambda. It means that a v now is the eigenvector of a, a transpose, and lambda is, it appears, as the eigenvalue of the a transpose, a to the a transpose also, is the eigenvalue of a, a transpose also. So if you remember previously here, we denoted the unit eigenvectors of the AA transposed as the U. So that is why whenever we normalize this AV by making this unit eigenvector, it should be equal to the U because we denoted the U as the eigenvector of the AA transposed. So that is why we have the equation AV is equal to the norm of the AV is equal to the U where we denote this AV as sigma, so that is why we have the equation A multiplied to the V is equal to the sigma multiplied to the U. So this equation should be true for all singular, for all eigenvalues and all eigenvectors. We call the sigma as singular value. So since this is true for all the eigenvectors v and all the eigenvectors u, we have this kind of system of linear equations. Uh, a multiplied to the v1 is equal to the sigma 1 u1. A multiplied to the v2 is equal to the sigma 2 u2 and so on. A multiplied to the vr is equal to the sigma r ur. We can actually write this in a matrix form. So let us put all the left hand sides as the columns of one matrix. A multiplied to the V1 is the first column. A multiplied to the V2 is the second column and so on. A multiplied to the VR is equal to the another matrix which is formed by putting all the right hand sides of the system of linear equations as the columns. Sigma 1 U1, Sigma 2 U2 and so on. Sigma R U R. So by taking out the A from all the columns of this matrix, we can obtain that the A multiplied to V1, V2, and so on, VR. It will be equal to, so we can take out all the sigmas from here to the right as a diagonal matrix. So U1, U2, and so on, UR will be multiplied to the diagonal matrix was the entry sigma 1, sigma 2, and so on, sigma r. Let us denote this matrix as V, denote this matrix as U, and denote this matrix as sigma. Then we have this kind of equation, A multiplied to the V is equal to the U multiplied to the sigma. Then since V is orthogonal matrix, we can write we can multiply both sides to the V transpose and we can write this decomposition as A multiplied to the U sigma V transpose. And this decomposition is called the singular value decomposition.